You know, understanding all the different nuances and all the different things in fishing, gosh, I mean, it's an impossibility. You know, you can, you can look at all the encyclopedias and all the Google questions you can ask in the world and, and you could never get all the answers. And it always evolves and it always changes. There's always some guy tinkering with a new bait style, doing something different. And, and therefore in fishing, it's just an always search for knowledge. But the one thing about it, guys at the touring profession level, are seeing things in, in comprehending and processing information all the time. And this show is, is really about bringing a lot of that data together on a variety of different baits and a variety of different styles and sharing things on why they choose to use a certain bait at a certain time to basically help you catch more fish. The first item of the fish catching process we're going to take a look at today is fishing line. It comes in all different sizes and materials, but understanding the most specific details about a particular line can be the difference in whether or not you get a bite. Choosing fishing line, it's, it's more, there's more to it than you think there is. Uh, when you look at a, at a pro angler who's casting for cash, casting to feed his family, he's really spent a lot of time thinking about what line is gonna work for him in each and every situation. You know, choosing a line for, for flipping can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. I choose the simple side. Whenever I'm flipping aquatic vegetation, grass, lily pads, water hyson, whatever it might be, my choice of line is Sunline FX2, 60 pound test. I mean, when it comes to throwing crankbaits, jerkbaits, vibrating jigs, spinner baits, I mean, just all of those reaction baits, anything that I'm going to chunk out there and wind in, FC Crank is the line that I like to use. You know, being a power fisherman at heart, one of my favorite lines to use is Sunline Shooter Fluorocarbon. It's the perfect fluorocarbon for flipping heavy cover. Oh, come here, chunk. Well, he choked on it, too. When it comes to choosing and picking fishing line, uh, there's a lot of details to it that I believe help you get more bites. I mean, just grabbing the line and going out and going fishing, yes, you can get some bites, but grabbing the right line, the right diameter uh, for the actual application and, and style you're fishing, it's going to really pay off for you. I get asked a lot, you know, when to use mainline braid for spinning or going with straight fluorocarbon. And for me, the answer is always braid. There's not a single technique for me that I want to throw mainline fluorocarbon. So the most important thing to look at when selecting line would be the diameter. If you want a crankbait to run deeper, you want a smaller diameter. If you want something to stay up higher in the water column, you want a bigger diameter. Gerald, there's a lot of lines out there. When do I choose monofilament? Anytime your bait's floating. How about that? If you're gonna throw top water, you don't want to throw it on a light braid, throw it on monofilament. If you can hear any type of um, you know, rubbing going through your guides, you want to make sure your guides are clean. If your guides are clean, then that fluorocarbon probably needs to be replaced. Now, when it's on your spool, it's going to look really clear. If it starts to look milky, that's because it's got a lot of abrasions on it, and it probably needs to be replaced. Understanding your fishing line is really key. Understanding what it's going to do for you when you're going out fishing is, is, is something that's so important. That's why professional anglers really spend a lot of time worried about their line. They change their line more often than a recreational guy, and they match the fishing line to exactly the performance or the situation style technique that they're going to be doing. Up next on the Fisherman's Handbook, we take a look at a specific product from Sunline and provide an in-depth breakdown of what makes this exact fishing line so effective. Stay tuned. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors, we love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus free two day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. 
the legendary Ranger Z series. Unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. There's a lot of different fishing lines available. And you know, you may think you can just grab any old line off the shelf and, and be successful. And sure, you can, you can do that in, in a lot of situations. But if you're wanting to maximize both the performance of your bait, the ability to, to feel that bait, and the a line that's durable and tough enough to be able to handle a lot of different conditions and last for a while, you've got to pick a more premium line to be able to help you find success. As far as fluorocarbon goes, Sunline Sniper is what I depend on 90% of the time. This is my favorite line that Sunline makes. I have been using it for don't know how many years, but well over 10 years now. So Sunline FC Sniper is my go-to all around fluorocarbon. It's a 100% fluorocarbon line. It's perfect for some of your light line finesse situations, and then you can go up in line diameter size and, and pound test to get to your more durable, heavy duty applications, big worm jigs, you know, flipping, reaction baits, things like that. A little bit of stretch, uh, invisible to the fish, very ultra sensitive, but the best part about it is how smooth it is. FC Sniper is one you can use for multiple applications and have it feel like a monofilament. And that's why I like Sniper. There he is. God, that sucker's mean right there. About done, fish. Come here. Chunky. Chunky little guy, isn't he? Just made a swat at it. Look how fat that fish is. The Sunline's FC Sniper, uh, when you start really thinking about it, you've got some small diameter line sizes that are perfect for a lot of your finesse type fishing situations. Uh, seven pound test is, is actually one of my favorites to be able to use. I use it a lot on spinning rods. I guess in the old days we went six, eight, ten, you know. Now we have a bunch of them and the seven pound is probably the coolest line that Sunline makes because it's right in between what usually is too heavy and too light. It, it is true to what it says. So the diameter is right to seven pound. It breaks at seven pound and, or a little over usually, but it's accurate. And that's what, I like that line and I can't tell you how awesome it is. That's all I can say. When you move it up to that 10 uh, pound test and, and get a little higher, you're really dealing with a line that's incredibly durable for its, for its size and basically visible in the water. Cranking, like if I'm gonna throw a big plug at Gunnersville, Say I'm throwing some type of giant crankbait, three or four ounce crankbait, I may throw it on 14 sniper. I've still got strong, strong tensile strength that's not gonna give out on me, but yet the line's thin enough it'll get down. And then when you take it up to your, your bigger sizes, like 16 pound and 20 pound, which is two of my favorite uh, sizes for a lot of that square billing, spinner baiting, uh, chatter baiting, uh, dragging a jig, you know, throwing a big shaky head out on the bottom, anything along those lines, I know I've got a line that's gonna be very sensitive very durable and it's going to allow those bites to be transmitted up into, into my hands through that rod so I can feel it but when I set the hook it's going to stand up and when I'm fighting a fish trying to get into the boat that that strand is all I've got I know the sniper is going to perform for me oh there's one pretty good one too holy cow golly he jumped <laughs> right there fish oh he's mean he hit it way out here at the boat way out here well he's still taking you're not that big but you are mean yeah <laughs> getting whooped by this guy yeah come here fish better than i thought he was he smoked it too. One thing, a little history about myself and Sunline. I've been using Sniper for 20 years and I have, you know, know the ins and outs of this line on how it feels and how it feels compared to other lines. The reason I like Sniper more than any other line is it's very, very soft. It has almost a monofilament feel to it 
in a sense that it doesn't have a lot of memory. I can put on 20 and 22 pound a sniper and not have any memory with it. But the Sunlight Sniper is the most manageable, limp, softest line as far as fluorocarbon goes that I've ever used. Try a sniper. Uh, if you haven't tried the FC Sniper by Sunline yet, you might want to give it a shot. And after the break, we shift our focus to baits and lures. You now have a better knowledge of which lines to use in a given scenario. Next, we'll talk about which bait to tie to the end of it. What are them sons of fishies up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep. Most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Engel, the original high performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Welcome back to this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook. As we walk you through the process of selecting the right equipment for a successful fishing trip, we want to now take a look at selecting baits this segment will focus on two different lipless crankbaits from Spro, showcasing the quality of the product and explaining exactly when and where to use each one. When it comes to hard baits, not all of them are created equally. Uh, some of them are gonna have a different action, different sound, different quality components. And therefore, when you're picking different hard baits to get those reaction bites and trigger those uh, you know, aggressive strikes that you're hoping to get, you need to ensure that you're using a bait that, you know, is, is built and gonna make sense and last for you for some time. The Spro Aruku Shad is my go-to rattle bait anytime fish are feeding on shad. From early spring all the way to late fall, anywhere from grass to shell beds. And it's something that you need to carry whatever lake, river, reservoir that you're going to or any kind of body of water because basically they catch fish everywhere. You know, the Aruku Shad is a bait to me that really mimics a lot of different bait fish coming through the water. And you can choose based on the color, um, you know, what bait fish you're mimicking. And I find that that bait predominantly really suits my fishing needs when I'm fishing around grass. And what I want to do in those situations is get it in, around, and touching the grass, rip it out, and when I do that, or pause it in that same type of a sequence, I, I can trigger some bites for some very lethargic fish a lot of times. There's one. There's maybe a better fish here. Oh yeah. Nice fish. Got him on the old Ruku shad in here in the brush. There is scattered hydrilla all through here. And brush every, boy he's green. He's mean. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah, pretty fish right there. You know, the Spro Aruku Shad is a bait that's a very go-to bait for me. Uh, 
in a couple different situations. I like to throw it when the water's cold around grass and around bushes and, and places like that where the fish are kind of, they may be bur buried up in the grass or they may be sitting on the edge of some of the bushes or some type of cover and I can take that bait based on the depth that I think the fish are will determine if I think they're real shallow, I'll probably use a lighter one. If I think they're a little deeper, I'll use a heavier one. Now this is a little more than a half ounce, like a five eighths. So it's a little bit heavier than your traditional type rattling baits which is really good, especially if you're fishing around a lot of deep grass and you need to get in and out of there very, very quickly. I can throw it up in and around that cover, let the bait sink down to where it's touching it or buried up in it and then rip it out and pause it and, and make my rod dance, make the bait dance and then that very erratic nature of the pauses, the ripping, the the, you know, going fast, slowing down, falling in front of them. A lot of times it'll trigger some great strikes from lethargic fish. Water's two degrees warmer back here and they are knocking the fire out of it when they bite. I mean, they are just nailing it. Boy, these fish are healthy. Anybody that's ever fished a lipless crankbait, and I'm partial to the Spro or Roku Shad, but anybody that's ever fished one of these will tell you when you get on this kind of bite and you pause it and they hit it like a freight train and they start going the other way, will attest that it is one of the funnest bites that you'll ever have. And now you're gonna get your feelings hurt. You're gonna lose a couple because a lot of times they'll slap at it and get hooked on the outside of the mouth and they'll get away. But when they bite it, it's a blast. When it comes to, you know, like a lipless crankbait, um, you're gonna find different weights of them and that's gonna affect their, their buoyancy as far as how fast they sink, how they, you know, sit up when you're pulling them. Uh, your colors, you know, I'm, I'm a fair, fair believer in the majority of the colors I use are, are fairly consistent to match the bait fish that you're gonna find in a lot of different locations. And then the other things that, that I look for are the rattles, you know, how loud that bait is and uh, it's, it's wiggle and wobble once you're, uh, you're retreating. Loud. Waimuku in Japanese means very loud, and that's exactly what this bait is. It's got a hard rattle in it, so it knocks real loud. If you put on the front eye, you can fish five to eight foot water. Then it has a tournament snap. You can take it out. You don't need to open. You just put on back on the second one. If you use the second eye, you can fish three to five foot water. So anytime you're ripping grass, like in early spring, and say you get on a grass line and it gets a little bit deeper, you don't have to change to another bait. You can just switch it back and you're ready to go. So in the early spring when I'm fishing this bait, I fish this bait on braided line, normally on a 7.6 cranking rod on braid, ripping it out of the grass, burying it in there, ripping it out, getting a reaction bite from it. That seems to be where this bait really shines. You can use it uh, spring time and fall season, catch more fish around the grass area, whatever you want, the cold water. The Wamek shot really works. Yep, just try Wamek shot from Spro. We've reached our final break in the action. On the other side, we'll take a look at soft plastics and educate you on which styles to throw and when to throw them. Keep it tuned here for more. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out a spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, yeah, good one. If you're ready to be that guy, Get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. When you spray on a layer of Sawyer's permethrin insect repellent, you've just sprayed on adventure. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating 
Which line? I choose the simple side. My choice of line is Sunline. One of my favorite lines to use is Sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled trout, know, sharks. There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. TH Marine, from transom to trolling motor. And by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. Soft plastics, they're a tried and true method for catching bass during all times of the year. However, they also come in a wide variety of color options. Here are three specific color patterns you should have in your boat. Hey guys, Cliff Perch here. I want to give you a little tip on color selection all over the country. You know, there's tons of colors to choose from, but as long as I've got a few ranges covered, you know, I feel like I feel like I can catch fish anywhere. I keep a black and blue or a June bug color anytime I'm fishing really off color water or I'm fishing through dark grass, maybe matted cover. Anytime I'm flipping that real tannic water as well or, or muddy, muddy water, I'm gonna end up with my black and blue June bugs, a real dark dark colors. Green pumpkin is just a standard. It's it's one that I probably use the most out of any colors. It, it works almost everywhere. It's a good natural color, mimics bluegills, crawdads, anything natural. So green pumpkin's just a really good one. And, and if I'm fishing really clear water, sometimes I'll, I'll try to take that green pumpkin to another level or, or go to a watermelon. This is the tilapia color and it has a little bit of purple flake, a little bit of kind of green, blue, gold flake in it. And, and it gives just a little more sparkle and a little more pop to some of that clear water to really bring those colors out. But those are three standard colors I use all over the country and, and they're gonna cover almost any situation that you encounter. That's awesome. Wrapped up. Oh, sniper. Look at the belly on that little guy. I don't think that guy's not healthy. Hey folks, Dean Rojas here with three quick tips on springtime fishing. You know, springtime fishing can be a lot of fun, and there's three things that I like to use to cover a lot of water and to figure out where the fish are doing. So I have a three-step approach. One is a big bite cane thumper, and I like to throw this and cover a lot of water. This bait here, swam through the grass, will catch those more aggressive fish and kind of give you an idea of where they're positioned uh, at in, in the bay and so forth. Secondly, when you need to slow down just a little bit more and pitch around, with my big bite fighting frog in a watermelon red color, is a dynamite application in places where you can pitch it around grass and really slow down the presentation to try and catch the, the bigger fish. And then the tried and true, the trick stick, is something that you can use when we've had a cold front, which always happens in the springtime, where you can slow down, you can use it rig on, a, on a Texas rig or on a wacky rig, as you can see. Three quick tips for catching quick bass at your local lake. And when you start throwing those soft plastic trick worms and stuff around out there, your trick stick, that can be the end result. Once you start catching fish on soft plastics, one of the biggest things you don't want to be worrying about is whether or not you might run out of that special bait they're biting. Lucky for you, Big Bite Baits has a solution. I want to share with you something new that we got coming out. This is our new 25 count pro pack. We're offering this in a lot of our popular shapes, sizes, and colors. This is more of an economical option for you guys, more bang for your buck, more lures per dollar. As well as that, it offers a little bit better organization. You know, me personally, I'm not a big fan of the 10 count bags. The next thing I know, I got 100 bags laying in my boat and it's just a big mess. So with these, one bag is usually plenty to get through the day. It helps me stay organized, helps me save money, helps me catch more fish. If you're looking for a 25 count bag, check out Big Bite Baits. It's a lot of data to, to look at what we talked about today. And if you really sit back and think about it, and remember at the beginning of the show, I said, look, you can't Google enough, you can't fill enough encyclopedias with all the data that you can talk about on fishing. And so to sit here and think that we answered all the questions and, and helped you with every answer in just a, a quick 30 minute show would absolutely be a fishing lie. But what I hope we did was give you some general information on a variety of baits, some of them that are very new, with some tips to from some of the top touring professionals out there on how and why and when they throw, they throw certain baits. And uh, you know, if you take anything away from it, maybe you'll help catch you a few more fish on your next trip. I got my power pulled down. Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake. Sitting 
so still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down For precise prescription eyewear Wiley X knows there's no room for error. We meticulously craft our own prescription lenses to fit our high wrap frames. And our ANSI safety rated lenses are tested to uncompromising standards. Nothing but precise. Because precision is everything. You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably Four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube, but I completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.